almost every single video that I've published, there's usually a comment saying, hey, what browser is that? And I've been using the Arc browser for just over two years now, pretty much since it came out. In fact, I even published a video that you can find right here that I talk about how the Arc browser and the browser company is breaking up with me. But they have a new browser and i've been reluctant to try out this new browser mostly because i don't think it's what i want i don't think it's what anyone really wants but i figured i would give it an honest go i'd give it my honest thoughts and then maybe i'll just install it here with you right now to make sure that you know hey these these are my honest thoughts there's nothing that i'm hiding from the get-go so that you know exactly what i'm thinking about when i'm playing around and using the Dia browser for the first time. Dia, Dia, I don't know, let's go. Before we get back into the video, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of the channel for this month, it's Bento. Now Bento is an incredible service. To call it just a mail service, an email service is really an understatement because it's so much more. You can use it for transactional emails, for flow emails like marketing emails, but it also has an incredible amount of other products, of other uh, options that you can use that really make your app great, to make your product even better and the founder and the support for bento is absolutely top notch uh, jesse the founder of bento is someone who truly cares about making things about creating things about making a great product he's been doing it for a while and so thank you so much for bento for sponsoring this channel this month let's get back into it all right, again, I haven't installed this. I haven't used it. I haven't even watched many videos on it. I don't really know what it does. I just know what the Arc browser does, and hopefully it can come close to that. I have seen the tides shift a little bit, both on, on Twitter and just in Reddit and the places that I follow for any kind of news. A lot of people are seeming to like the Dia Dia browser. I don't know which one it is, so I'll just call it, I'll call it Dia for now. So let's go ahead and install it. Let's open it. <laughs> and right away we're creating an account. I, I think I'm I'm curious because the Arc browser had this great kind of uh, opening and I'm not seeing that unless like maybe I need to download it again. Maybe there's some like some something cache. I remember when I initially opened this up and then I was like, hey, let me just make a video about it first. I remember seeing something different and then I re-downloaded the, uh, you know, the, the .pkg file and then this is what I'm seeing. So I don't know. I'm going to hide my password from you. Confirm. All right. We're going to import everything from Arc for now. Import extensions. I'm probably going to use Alpine.js dev tools. I don't really need, we'll do view stats. Let's do that. Teach Dia the what voice to respond in. That's very interesting. A few writers, public figures, or brands you love. I actually, I don't know. I don't, there's no uh, public figures, brands, or voices that I think of. Like, hey, I want this person to talk with me. Um, let's go ahead and say, I like the Wendy's brand. I just wanted to roast me the whole time. We'll go ahead and say that that's good. Give Dai a shot. And we'll try as default for a week. I'm curious what this does. Does it automatically switch back to the other default? We'll use it. We'll try it out. I didn't have the sound correctly on, but right when it did, I did a little like a bloop, 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 bloop kind of thing um, where it opened it up and then it immediately opened up to this unlisted browser. 1K view. So you could see here that, okay, about a thousand people, eh, well, let's say half people watch this. So let's say around 2000 people have installed and used Dia for now, unless they, you know, just recently did this. And this is two weeks ago. I'm not going to watch this. Uh, mostly just going to, I'm going to play around with everything. So like the initial first thought is like, it, it definitely feels like the Arc browser in the sense that, you know, it, it looks very nice. Command T opens a new tab instead of kind of like that command palette. That's something that I really personally liked. Um, I liked spaces 
on Arc because I could have a space for streaming. I could have a space for recording videos. I could have a space for uh, my personal stuff. I could have a space for my work stuff where I'd have the different pin tabs and also just kept uh, kept my, you know, my browsing separate from that. And it doesn't look like I have that. I have bookmarks, which again, these are just, that's interesting of how that kind of imported it from Arc. These were just my pinned tabs. And of course, Arc didn't have bookmarks in the same sense that, you know, we, we think of bookmarks. That, you know, there are all these things that you need to, to go to. I, I didn't, that was something that was new to me with Arc. I bookmarked so much before Arc. But now I just had the ability to just search the things I needed and kind of like not have to uh, have too many pinned tabs. Um, but I know that Daya, like its whole premise is AI first in the sense that as you're browsing, you can chat with specific things. And we'll just open this up and let's go ahead and say accepting multiple parameters and Laravel commands. Okay. And I guess like this is the whole premise of Daya. You have this chat feature. I wonder if there's like a, okay, command E to hide it. Interesting. This bar is really red. Maybe like that's like is that just the... Laravel news site. That's really strange. I wonder if it takes like the top color and it does that. Like if I was go to, uh, let's go, let's go to daily dev again. Yeah. Does it just take the top color? That's really, really interesting. Can I not hide these icons here as well? Like I, I don't want all of them. Okay. I can unpin them. All right. So if I want to chat with like a specific thing, in this case, I want to find, let's say, TUI gRPC client. All right. If I was just going to ask, what would I use something like this for? What kind of project should I build with this? The personal... Uh, I'm guessing, okay, so this is like where I could list Wendy's to say that this is why I need to answer, but I could also say um, a bit about myself, how I want diet to write. Like all of this is, is, I guess, just like prompt, you know, crafting in a lot of ways. Um, this could be floating, which is really interesting. I don't know. I guess it, the, the, the thing that I'm, you know, missing out on or I just don't understand it fully is I don't know when I would want to chat with browsing stuff that I'm that I'm that I'm doing I that hasn't been my normal workflow and again like maybe there, there's things with arc that I didn't get used to or I didn't think I would like until I started using them so maybe that is something like this particular thing as well but there's just a lot that I don't necessarily understand um so like the the whole sidebar, I don't really care about the whole sidebar versus top bar thing. I think I even saw that um, they were going to start having sidebar option. If I was to pull up this, yeah, they don't have too much. Um, we'll turn that on. Interesting. So we could see, I could see this being useful. This right here, this this history. What was the doc with the mean notes I looked at yesterday? There's so many times where I'm like, oh, okay. I don't remember because, so I use reflect notes. Uh, if I was to like pull that up right here, I use reflect notes where, um, let's go ahead and take a look at my daily notes. You can see there's these all, there's these links that come up with reflect notes and they're things that I find and I like to just save because then I can search for them when I'm using my reflect notes and I use the reflect uh, extension to be able to say, okay, if I want something interesting, um, let's go ahead and if I was to find something on Laravel News, for example, and I was to say, um, Tinkerwell 4, I didn't know that that was available, so that's something that I want to like kind of look at again. And maybe they have you know some docs or change log, Tinkerwell 5 is coming soon. Okay, like this might be something I want to like look at later. And so instead of bookmarking it, I've been using reflect to just kind of, I have to authenticate looks like. I'll do that later. But usually I'll click the reflect kind of uh, 
extension. And I'll say, hey, let me save this because then it goes into my uh, daily links. And then I can search from there of like, oh yeah, what was that one thing that I was looking for when it came to a particular um, website, a particular tool, a particular package, something that I wanted to save for later. But I never usually want to chat with something. At least it hasn't been in my normal occurrence, my normal daily workflow to do that. But I can definitely understand the history thing, the at history of like, what was that, um, you know, GitHub tool I looked at. Open a new tab. What was that GitHub tool I looked at? Okay, so it probably hasn't been saving because I haven't actually accessed that page yet. Um, but I could see the history being very useful because there are so many things that I look at, I see, I don't necessarily save, but then I'm, I'm, I'm racking my brain. And this is one of the few things that I think AI wearables could, could really solve as well. But in the sense that I don't necessarily um, talk through of like, oh, I was looking through that. And I don't necessarily want everything on my browser or even everything on my, you know, on my laptop being saved to have that kind of context or information. But and and I'd be curious of like what the actual, you know, like history, like for this, um, like if, if this gets sent anywhere, like pages viewed and coming, but it's never saved. Okay, fine. Um, but yeah, I'm curious of like how much that actually saves, how much it stores and what it does for it later on. Um, then we have specific profiles. So we do have the I idea of profiles, just not spaces, it looks like. And those profiles are, you know, they have their own history. They have their own pri the passwords and credit cards. I use one password, so I don't have to worry about stuff like that. Um, yeah. Overall, there's not like too much, honestly. There's nothing like, hey, this is something I'm, I'm interested in. And even when I like, I open up a new tab, I'm not necessarily interested in just chatting right away. There's a reason I have Claude. There's a reason why I have, you know, I, I use code like Claude code or open code or any of those things. I don't necessarily want that when I open up a browser, you know, I have other ways to get the quick answers that I need. And maybe like, maybe again, maybe my preferences, maybe my, um, you know, workflow will change when I do more of, of this, um, I can mention specific tabs. I can write, I can code again. I don't know if I want this because I don't know if I want the things that I'm usually doing in separate tools to be combined into my one browser. Usually I, and, and even like the whole, um, you know, the whole, let me find a new, like, I wonder if like it can even show me stuff like find me a new, uh, I don't know, a new variable package that m not many people have used before. So I can look at it. All right. And see, this, it, it, it accessed Laravel news, which I'm assuming is because of that I, I had visited this. So like, like how much is this actually like searching the web and finding this? I guess maybe it is. That could be like uh, an outline for a video where I can show off this package. Again, stuff like this, it's nice in the sense like it's very kitsch, niche, it's very kitschy. I don't know what the exact word that I'm thinking of is, but it's it's stuff that is nice if you use it in that context. And I don't think, like I'm not going to replace my like opening Claude like this. I'm not going to replace Claude code to, you know, do any of like code. Why would I do that in a browser? And again, maybe there are some small things where I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. And again, maybe there are some great options for chatting with a particular tab. I can't think of it just yet. If I'm, if I'm wanting to interact or ask information of like 
things that I'm browsing. Usually it's something I could easily download as a PDF and then upload somewhere else. And maybe like those small and few instances, that's when I do want to do something like this. I just don't do it regularly enough in my workflow that I don't see my workflow changing over time. But then again, you know, things within Arc changed over time as well, where I did want to have multiple spaces, where I did only want pin tabs and not and not bookmarks and everything like that. And so maybe there is a part of me that knows that, hey, there there is something with this. So like with any other tool, I usually try to give it a good week, maybe even a month, and I'm just going to try it. I've tried other browsers, nothing stick. I've usually just kept going back to Arc. Um, but maybe something will stick here with Daya or Dia. And uh, until then, I'm just going to keep building the things I'm doing. I'm going to keep browsing how I normally am. And maybe it's going to change things. Maybe it's not. Um, but yeah, hopefully you do the same. So keep creating.